fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hoyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. When Flint Foster, a bandit serving life for robbery and murder, broke out of state's prison, the Lone Ranger and Toto took up his trail. But it was a cold trail, because they learned of the escape a week after it happened. They had to depend on information they picked up in towns and cow camps, all seeming to lead in one general direction. Then one morning, Toto rode into camp with an unexpected bit of information. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Easy, Scott. You must have learned something, Toto. You were riding fast. Ah. Uh. Me learn plenty, Kimosabi. Oh? Man look like Flint Foster. Stop at cow camp north of here yesterday. Cowboy say him ask many questions. Him ask about another man named Foster. Want to know where him live. Did he get the information from the men in the cow camp? No. Cowboy say them not know man him ask about. I think I know the man he's trying to find. You know him? Yes. It's his brother, Roy. Oh. A him bandit, too? No. Roy's a law-abiding citizen. He runs a small ranch a few miles from the town of Gasterville. Undoubtedly, Flint Foster's trying to find him. Uh, why Flint not know about where brother lived? Roy Foster's had nothing to do with his brother Flint for several years. In fact, Tonto, very few people know their brothers. Uh, and what we do now? If Flint Foster doesn't know exactly where his brother lives, it may take him a short time to find him. That may give us time to get to Roy's ranch first. Here's him. Well, that's right. He's uh, silver while I put on the saddle. Flint must have good reasons for going to see his brother. But whatever they are, not going to benefit Roy, easy fellow. When we get near Gasterville, you ride into town and tell the sheriff what you know. Advise him to be on the lookout. Uh, he do it. I'll ride to Roy's ranch and tell him his brother's escaped from prison and is looking for him. Um, easy, easy steady, big fellow. Come on, silver, him up, scout. Meanwhile, at the Foster Ranch near Gasterville, Roy entered the kitchen and found his wife, Edith, stirring a cake. My, but that looks good. It should be good, Roy. I used a dozen eggs, a pound of butter, and three cups of sugar. <laughs> What's the occasion? I know it's not my birthday or yours. Today's a big day in our lives. <laughs> oh, yes, now I get it. 
Today we pay off the mortgage to old Skinner. And I hope that'll be the last we ever see of him. Did you draw out the money to pay him when he comes? Yes, every cent. It is. Gold money. I never saw so much. thousand dollars makes quite a pile, even in gold money. I'll be so happy to have that mortgage paid off and to be rid of old Skinner. I'll even give him a piece of this cake. <laughs> I'll begrudge it if you do. Say, how long do you have to beat a cake like that? <laughs> oh, I, I'm through now. It's ready to go into the pan. There it is at the end of the table, Roy. Will you pass it to me? Here you are. Thought I heard someone riding up. Yes, I did too. If it's old Skinner, I'll tell him the note isn't due until noon. He'd have a lot of nerve coming out here. Roy. What's the matter, Edie? Look through the window. It's a masked man. Well, I'll be... Where's my gun? He's coming in here. You took your gun to be repaired. Oh, yes, I forgot. Quick, Edie, get that money out of sight. He must have learned I drew it out of the bank. But what'll I do with it? Oh, Roy, you'll take it. I know. We'll put it in the cake pan. There. Now pour that dough into the pan, quick. Oh, all right. There it is. Now put it in the oven. You'll never find it here. Hurry. There, it's in. But, Roy, what'll you tell him? I'll handle him, Edie. But don't let on at anything I say. No, I won't. What do you want? Oh, don't be alarmed. I'm not a bandit. And why are you wearing that mask? I have personal reasons for that. I'll bet you have. Now state your business and get out of here. There's a man in the next room and he has you covered. We saw you ride up. There's a man in the next room covering me? Yes, there is. And he'll shoot if you put a foot inside this house. If it's your brother who's You'd in better there, get I... going, mister, if you know what's good for you. Why doesn't the man in the next room show himself if he's in there? Maybe he's got personal reasons, just like you. Now get before he blows your head off. Very well. Adios, Foster. Well, of all the nerve. <laughs> I guess I made that yarn up plenty fast. And he sure fell for it, didn't he? But, Roy, he what? called you by name. Yeah. Yeah, he did it that. I, I wonder how he knew me. Perhaps... Perhaps what? Do you suppose your brother Flint told him to come here? Flint? Flint? I haven't seen him in five years, and he's in state's prison. I know that, but this masked man may have escaped from prison. Perhaps he knew Flint, and Flint told him you'd hide him out. Edie, you may have something there. And yet, if that was the case, why didn't he mention Flint's name or something? Well, that's easy. You told him somebody was in the next room. Maybe he was afraid to mention it. Yes, could be that. Well, if Flint thinks he can send his outlaw friends here for protection, he's wrong. This is our home and not a bandit hideout. And I'll give them all to understand that. My cake. Oh, it'll be ruined. Well, you better get it out of that hot oven before it starts to rise. Oh, just look at it. Take it out, quick. It's too late. I can't take it out. Oh, just look at it, Roy. It started to rise. Then shut the oven door and let it rise. But it's got our money in it. And it was to be our celebration cake. Now, honey, don't you cry. It's all right. In fact, it's better it turned out this way better? Sure, honey. <laughs> we'll surprise old Skinner when he comes out to collect his money. We'll josh him along. When he walks in and demands his money, we'll offer him a slice of cake instead. <laughs> I can hear the old miser yell his head off now. <laughs> and then we'll cut it open, and there'll be his money. <laughs> well, it should make him ashamed of himself for the way he's hounded us to pay up. But I guess we should be thankful that bandit didn't learn we had money in the house. Oh, oh, you should be thankful I used my head and told him somebody had him covered. He didn't waste any time getting away from here. Yes, that's right. I could see him through the window as he left. He was putting plenty of distance between us and himself. The sheriff in Gasterville was a friend of long standing of the Lone Ranger and Toto. He was therefore willing and eager to listen to Tonto when the Indian told about the Lone Ranger's belief that Flint Foster was in the vicinity and looking for his brother's ranch. Well, too, uh, where's your mask friend now? A Lone Ranger go to Roy Foster's home. Warn him about brother. Are you meeting him there? That's right, Sheriff. Well, then I think I'll ride out there with you. From what I've heard, Flint Foster's a mighty dangerous man. The masked man might not be able to handle him alone. Well, if Flint Foster show up, Lone Ranger get him. Well, you never can tell. 
Anyway, I'm going up with you. So let's get to our horses, huh? Horses hitched outside at rack. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy, steady, big fella. Here comes the sheriff from Toto now. Steady, big fella. Oh, there. Oh, 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 howdy. Good morning, Sheriff. Good to see you again after all this time. I might say the same to you. Tonto told me you were in the neighborhood. How have you been? First rate, thanks. Yeah, that's good. I uh, didn't expect to meet you riding into town. I was going after you. Uh, Tonto told you about Flint Foster's escape and my belief that he was headed for his brother's ranch. Yes, he told me all about it. I think he's in the ranch house right now. I was riding into town to get you. What makes you think he's at the ranch? Well, I'll tell you what happened a short time ago when I rode up to the ranch. The Lone Ranger quickly related his reception by Roy Foster and his wife and how Roy had told him of an armed man in the next room. I decided discretion was the better part of valor for the time being. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt he would have shot me had I tried to enter the house. You're right about that. But uh, why didn't you tell him uh, what you'd come for and let it go at that? If Flint Foster was concealed in the parlor, they knew it. Yes. I'd be telling them nothing they didn't know. Yes, of course. They thought I was a bandit, and I let it go at that until I could get in touch with you. I'm surprised at Roy. Oh. I never thought he'd protect a criminal, even his own brother. He may have acted under duress. Now we must go back there and get Flint Foster. Maybe I'd better go back to town for some deputies. We eh? haven't time, and it shouldn't be necessary. The three of us should be able to take him. Yeah. Now, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Do you expect old Mr. Skinner to come for his money? Any time between now and later this afternoon. Don't worry, Edie. He'll be here, the old skinflint. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that cake smell good? Ah, it sure does. When are you going to take it out of the oven? Oh, in a few minutes. It should be done shortly. Someone's at the door. I didn't hear anyone ride in. I'll bet you knew had it's old Skinner. He's so tight he wouldn't hire a rig to drive out here. I can't wait to see his face when we offer him a cake instead of his money. Quiet now, don't let on. We'll have some fun before we pay him off. Hey, where'd you come from? Hello, Roy. You weren't expecting me, were you? Of course not. It's your brother Flint. Hello, Edie. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? Come on in, Flint. Yeah. Nice little place you got here, Roy. Why'd you come sneaking up on us like this? Oh, you never can tell. You might have company. I left my horse in the draw about a quarter of a mile west of here. Mind if I sit down? Close to the window? Safer. <laughs> what are you sitting there for? Waiting for that masked friend of yours to show up again? And I don't like the idea of you sending your bandit friends here, Flint. I'm not running a hideout for owl hoots. What are you talking about? You know what we're talking about. The critter who came riding up expecting us to welcome him with open arms. I sent him packing. He'd better not show up around here again unless he wants his hide punctured. Did you say a masked man? Yes, and he was riding a big white horse. Now, don't say you don't know him, Flint Foster. Yeah, I know him, but I didn't send him here. Look, here he comes now. And he's got the sheriff and an Indian with him. Now, listen, you two. A gun. What's the idea of drawing a gun on us? Edie, sit on that chair in a corner. I'll not do it. I think you will. Don't shoot me. Do as he says, Edie. He'll kill you. You bet I will. And I'll kill you too, Roy, if you don't do as I say. They're after me. And I'm not going to be caught alive. Now, I'm going into the next room. And Roy. Yes? Get them away from here. I don't care how you do it, but do it. And if you tip them off that I'm in the next room, I'm going to kill Edie. I'll have her covered. You murdering coyote. How about it, Roy? All right. I'll get rid of her. Good. I thought you would. But don't forget I've got a beat on Edie. And if she gets up out of that chair, I'm pulling the trigger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Drawing up at a safe distance from the house, the lone ranger, Toto, and the sheriff dismounted. The masked man gave orders. Toto, go around the house and cover the front door. Yeah, me do it. Sheriff, you and I will go to the kitchen door. But keep out of range of that window. Yes, I will. Now get your gun handy. I'm aiming to bust in that kitchen door with my boot. All right, I'll cover you. Say, it's Roy. You open the door. Morning, Sheriff. Want to come in? Well, uh, we was aiming to, only I didn't expect to get invited in. Well, come on in. Who's this masked critter? I ran him off once this morning. I, uh, I don't see him. Do you, masked man? Oh, oh uh, good morning, Edith. Good morning, Sheriff. What in the world is the matter with you coming in here with guns drawn? Roy, where is he? Where's who? The man who was concealed in here when I was here before. Yes, him. Where is he? <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's not funny. <laughs> oh, but, Sheriff, there was no one here. I only told him that. Why? Why do you think? We're decent, law-abiding people. We thought you were a bandit. That's why Roy told you what he did. And there wasn't nobody here but you and Roy? Of course not. And anyway, Sheriff, just who is this masked man you're riding with? Well, he's no bandit. I can assure you that. He's a friend of the law. My purpose in coming here was to tell you that your brother might be dropping in on you. Flint? Yes. My Indian friend and I have been trailing him since he broke out of prison a week ago. I have reasons to believe he's looking for you. I thought he was the one concealed in here. <laughs> so that's why you came here, huh? Yeah. Now, that's different. I, I'm i sorry I treated you the way I did. I'd have explained at the time, but you said I was covered with a gun. Well, now I can understand how it was. I can be on the lookout if that no-good brother of mine does come snooping around here. We're certainly glad to know about it now. Say, something's burning in here. I can smell it. My cake. Oh, it's burning. Sit down, Edith. But it'll be ruined. I'll get it. Oh, I burned my hand. Hurry, Roy, it'll be ruined. Here, I'll use my glove. Let me get it out. Just put it on the table there. It'll be all right. Oh, that hurts. My fingers are blistered. There. Gee, it's not ruined at all. Looks mighty nice to me, eh? Is it a pound cake? Oh, no, it, it's devil's food. <laughs> the heaviest cake I ever lifted. <laughs> oh, Edie puts lots of eggs and things in her cakes. They're uh, always heavy like that. Yes. Uh, that's right. If there's anything I like to eat, it's fresh cooked cake. Uh, you uh, wouldn't be cutting it now, would you, Edith? Oh, I'm sorry, Sheriff. Uh, but it's a present I made for Mr. Skinner. Old Skinner? You mean you made a cake for that ornery old critter? Uh, yes, as a present. It's his birthday. Well, that's more than I'd ever do for him. He's the tightest old skin flint in Gasterville. Sheriff, you just don't understand, Mr. Skinner. He's all right when you get to know I've him. I've known the old coup for 20 years. He's just as mean as ever. Well, my friend, I reckon we might as well be getting on. I suppose so, Sheriff. Thanks for telling me about my brother. I'll be on the lookout for him. Yes, so long, Roy. Goodbye, Edith. Goodbye, Goodbye Sheriff. Sheriff. Oh. All right, Flint, you can come out. I'm coming. You handle that situation right well, Roy. I'll make it up to you now. How do you mean? With that masked man on my trail, I'm not going to stick around here. You're in favor of that, I guess. You mean you know the masked man? Yeah, I know who he is. He's the Lone Ranger. What? The Lone Ranger? The sheriff hadn't been with him, and his Indian pal Tonto hadn't been at the front door waiting for me. I'd have shot him. That's the only reason I didn't. The sheriff or the Indian would have got me if I hadn't. The Lone Ranger. And you'd have killed him. If he's on your trail, you're through, Flint. Just a matter of time, that's all. He won't follow where I'm going. I'm heading for the border, and when I cross it, I'm safe. Then you better get going. I will, as soon as I get what I came after. What's that? Money. I'll need about $500. We haven't any money. It's all we can do to hang on to this little spread. Yeah? And what were you doing in the bank this morning? I happened to be eating breakfast in a cafe across the street. Well, yes, I was in the bank. I don't deny it. I, I went in to get my mortgage renewed because I can't pay it off. I think you're a liar, Roy. I, I tell you, I haven't got a cent. I'll find out. I'm going to search this house from one end to the other. Go ahead and search it. You won't find any money. In the meantime, Edie, when that cake cools, I'm having a big slice of it. I'm hungry.
Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode with the sheriff until they were out of sight of the ranch house. Suddenly, the masked man signaled a halt. What are you stopping here for? Pick up the trail. Someone's coming. Ah, me see him. Him right mule. <laughs> That's not Flint Foster. I didn't say it was. I thought perhaps you might not want to be seen riding with a masked man, Sheriff. Well, I reckon it wouldn't be a good idea. That fella coming, he'd spit it all over town. You know him? Sure, I know the ornery critter. It's old Skinner. He holds a mortgage on Roy's ranch. Rides out here all the time and pesters Roy and Edith about paying up. Then Tonto and I'll turn off the trail. All right, mister. It might be a good idea. We'll contact you later. Right. Let's go, Tonto. I want to look him up. Come. Ginger. That's only the sheriff. Hello there, Skinner. Oh, howdy, Sheriff. Who oh, there, Ginger? Who there? Who there? Who there? Happy birthday, Skinner. Birthday? What in tarnation nonsense is this, Sheriff? Well, isn't it your birthday? Of course not. My birthday is the same as General Grant's. What put such a silly notion in your head? Well, Roy and Edith said it was your birthday. Oh, those rattle brain fosters. No telling what they'll make up next. Just the same. Edith baked a cake for him. Cake? Yes, sir, and it's a beauty. Ah. I was there when she took it out of the oven less than ten minutes ago. Well, I'm glad I ran into you, Sheriff. I'm glad I did. <clears throat> How do you mean, Skinner? Well, they're going to try to soft soap me out of serving foreclosure papers on them. That's what well... they are. That's why Edith baked that cake. Well, what's that got to do with me? Just this. I brought along foreclosure papers. If they don't pay up their mortgage today, these papers are to be served. Yeah, no. And the law says it's up to the sheriff to serve them. You didn't find anything, did you, Flint? No, I didn't. I looked everywhere, too. We knew you wouldn't find anything. It's a pity you couldn't take your own brother's word. I don't trust even my brother. Well, Edie, you can cut me a nice big slice of that cake now. I'll not do it. That's a present for Mr. Skinner. Who is this Skinner you keep talking about? He holds the mortgage on this place. I thought you said the bank held the mortgage. Uh, yes, yes, I did, but Mr. Skinner holds oh, a second up. mortgage. Listen. Somebody's riding up outside. See who it is, Edie. All right. It's him now. Who? Mr. Skinner, and he's got the sheriff with him. He must have met the sheriff on the trail to town. All right, I'm getting back to the parlor. Don't forget, I'll have you covered all the time. One false move and I gun the sheriff. I've seen too much of him already. We didn't expect to see you back so soon, Sheriff. Well, Skinner insisted I come along with him, Edith. I didn't want to. What's this about me having a birthday today? Why, didn't you tell us it was your birthday? Of course I didn't, and you know it, Roy Foster. Today means only one thing to me. I get my thousand dollars or I foreclose. Oh, and I baked this beautiful cake all for you, Mr. Skinner. Ah! I want my money now. Well, I've had a lot of company today, Mr. Skinner. The sheriff and some others were here. I, I didn't have time to go into the bank. You're a liar. Don't tell me that. You were in the bank early this morning. The cashier told me you were. Now, Mr. Skinner, please, you take your cake. Roy and I'll go into town and see about the money tomorrow. Here. You're not that blasted. I don't want a cake. I want my money. But it's a nice cake, Mr. Skinner. Ah. Edith baked it herself. It's got lots of good stuff in it. Now, take it and go. You'd better take it, Skinner. <laughs> it's your favorite cake, or should be. What do you mean by that, Sheriff? Why, it's called devil's food. Ah! Why, why are you insinuating, old buzzard? Here, give me that cake. No, oh, no, no, no don't, no, Mr. Way. Skinner. Ah. Oh. You old fool. Hit me in the face with that cake. Money, gold, lots of it. We tried to tell you to take it. It's gold, gold. You did have it. What the intended? You mean the money was inside the cake? All right, get your hands up, all of you. Hey, who are you? Jim, Flint Foster, the outlaw. Yes, yeah, Sheriff, sure, they're right. One move out of you and I'll blow your head off. We tried to save you, Sheriff. He's been in there all the time. But he had us covered with a gun. We didn't dare tell you he'd have killed us and you too. So you didn't have any money, huh, Roy? <laughs> I gotta hand it to you. You almost got away with it, stuffing it in that cake. <laughs> Yes, sir. If it wasn't so funny, I'd kill you. Now start raking it up off the floor and put it back in that cake pan. You can't have it. It's my money. Shut up, you old miser. I'll put a bullet through you. Oh. 
As old Skinner, the money lender, moaned in despair, Roy and Edith picked up the golden coins from the floor and put them in the cake pan. Then, picking it up, Clint Foster backed toward the door, his right hand holding a gun, and the left reaching for the knob on the door. Now, Sheriff. Yeah, what? You can tell that mask hombre who's been trailing me that I'm sorry I didn't meet up with him again. Mighty sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he missed his last chance to ever get me. Are you sure about hey, that? Huh? Right I'll show you. No, you don't. No. Take his gun, fellow. Uh-uh. Me get it. Did he shoot you? Oh, no, sure. I hit him before he had time to. The shot went wild. Well, I'll pick up the money. That's what I will. It's my money. And when you get it, you'll discharge the mortgage. Roy and I'll help you, Mr. Skinner. Then you'll be paid in full. There's just one thing I want to know. Yes. How come you returned to this cabin? When Don and I turned off the trail, we ran into Flint Foster's horse tied up in the draw. Yeah. It struck me before that Roy and his wife were acting under a strain of some kind. When we found the horse, I concluded that Flint was in the house, forcing them to act as they did. That's exactly what he was doing. Well, Sheriff, Todd and I will be on our way now. You can handle Flint Foster. Yep. You'll find his horse in the draw. Well, thanks, my friend. You certainly helped me out today. I'll never forget it. Adios. Adios, Adios to you. Goodbye, mister. All right there, Skinner. Yeah. If you're ready, you can ride along to town with me in this critter. I guess two poor cats don't smell no worse than one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not riding along with you unless you put handcuffs on that masked fella, too. Ah, oh, you old fool, he's gone. Anyway, he's no owl hoot. He's not? And why is he wearing a mask? Well, he's the Lone Ranger. I'll sell the This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.